It's a US $1.13 billion cash deal that would put Singapore's sats on the global map. The ground handling and in-flight catering company is buying Paris-based Worldwide Flight Services, the world's largest air cargo handling firm. The transaction would create an air cargo handling network stretching across the Americas, Europe and the Asia-Pacific. Here's Nero Wei with the details from the SATS Catering Centre at Changi Airport. Whispers of the deal have been floating around in the past week or so, and when the transaction completes, they expect by March next year, you'll put sets in the pilot seat. Overseeing more than 200 cargo and ground handling stations in over 20 countries, that will make this Singapore company a global leader, covering routes responsible for over half of the world's air cargo volume. The homegrown Singapore company says the move will allow it to better serve customers beyond Asia and tackle new growth markets like Latin America and Africa. Cargo business is about having a network because cargo flows is all about global network and it's important that SETS take this opportunity to actually go uh, create a global platform that is not apparent today in, in the market. So why this is a unique opportunity? Because this particular asset um, it's very strong in US and in Europe and those are the two areas that we are not in today. We are very strong in Asia and therefore from a strategy standpoint it fits like hand to glove. It's also an opportunity for SETS to diversify its portfolio and maintain growth going forward. One analyst says the deal can provide customers with better access or better services globally. Maybe just have uh, uh, access to a global company that is actually run by uh, Singapore uh, uh, Inc. Um, I think that actually uh, does uh, uh, potentially help customers in terms of uh, cost-wise that there's some synergy that they can actually uh, reap in, um, uh, instead of using a, a foreign uh, uh, player. Tomasic, which owns about a 40% stake in SETS, has agreed to vote in favour of this deal. Trading in SETS shares was halted earlier Wednesday, ahead of the announcement. And for more on this acquisition, we are joined by Associate Professor Go Pui Guan. He's from the Department of Analytics and Operations at NUS Business School. Uh, Professor Go, first up, let's talk about the timing of this proposed acquisition. What do you make of it? Well, thanks for having me. I think that this the timing is probably good. Um, if you look at what uh, logistics companies have been doing, uh, they have been trying to gain economies of scale, and that was mentioned uh, by, by uh, the CEO of SETS earlier on as well. So providing a one-stop service and economies of scale. And you see that, for example, with uh, MERS last year, as well as with PSA, in terms of acquiring companies to create a, a more uh, global footprint. So that says certainly uh, what uh, logistics companies need to do. And secondly, if you look at the air cargo business itself, that has really grown, uh, you know, in the last two years. So of course, passenger traffic tends to get more, uh, you know, uh, you know, more news uh, traditionally. But in in the last two years, uh, when you look at the impact of COVID, uh, actually passenger traffic has not gone back to pan, uh, pre-pandemic levels. But uh, actually, air cargo has already, uh, you know, uh, surpassed the pre-pandemic levels because of e-commerce and pharmaceuticals and perishables. And that is where a lot of that uh, growth is driving, uh, you, know, uh, you know, where a lot of that growth is happening for, for the air traffic. First of all, uh, you mentioned uh, what the CEO and president of SATS uh, talked about in terms of economies of scale. He also said this acquisition is uh, good for SATS to diversify its portfolio and maintain growth going forward. What exactly does that mean, diversify portfolio and maintain growth in the context of SATS acquiring this company? Sure. Um, if you look at SATS uh, currently, uh, you know, they, they already have around 80% of the Changi Airport business. So for them to grow further, they would have to then depend on the further growth of uh, Changi Airport. Right. So if they want to grow further, then it has to be regional or global. And, you know, so an acquisition like that uh, then allows them to go into new markets and new areas that uh, perhaps traditionally they have not been uh, operating in. And therefore, that allows them to create a new uh, growth footprint, uh, as well as uh, uh, potentially cross-selling opportunities to, uh, you know, customers in US and Europe that perhaps they never were able to access uh, so easily before. 
Now, you talked about all these new markets that, you know, they will be going into. At the same time, it might possibly carry some liabilities as well that SETS would have to take on. And um, it, that balances it out with the risk. How does it look? Well, I, I think the storyline of the acquisition is there, which is that, you know, it's a growth story of, uh, you know, of uh, tapping on, on the growth of air cargo business and the need for uh, integration and connectivity. So certainly in terms of the uh, broad strategic picture, it is there. Of course, there are the details, uh, you know, that we need to look at, which are not uh, disclosed yet, right? So it's, it's probably a mixture of cash and equity. Uh, financing, um, but uh, you know, uh, we, we should also think about this as probably a strategic uh, acquisition from their point of view. So it is not just about um, you know a growing business immediately, but it's really about growing the footprint and through that synergy of of having a global access to a, a, a customer base, then to be able to uh, create more synergies from that. So it may also take some time to to realize uh, those synergies as well. Uh, Foko, uh, effectively picking up on the point made earlier by the analysts, which was to say uh, for Singapore companies to have access to a global company with a global footprint. Uh, in other words, local companies here, such as local logistics companies, they can actually expect some kind of, to quote you, synergistic help from this tie-up. Uh, how do you see that? Sure. I, I think that there are two ways that this can happen, right? The first way is that um, I think this acquisition uh, you know, could strengthen Singapore as an air hub in itself. So if you look at uh, what, for example, uh, Singapore Airlines has been doing with the regional carriers, uh, you know, the regional carriers will do code sharing. They will they'll send their, you know, best, uh, their flights to Singapore and then from Singapore, they would take the long haul SQ flights out. You know, so, so that actually benefits uh, you know, Singapore as a hub. Right for the connectivity, and it's a little bit like the transshipment kind of concept uh, that we see with the ports in Singapore as well. So if you think about it from air cargo point of view, the fact that we are now integrated even more right to uh, other global airports, you know, through having these ground services and these air cargo services and having a one-stop shop, it means that it's more likely for cargo, you know, to flow through Singapore for consolidation and inbound and outbound again. So uh, that in itself would then, of course, add to the volumes of uh, cargo that's going through Singapore. And that would uh, then certainly benefit the logistics companies that are providing the service uh, uh, services for sets, you know, uh, in terms of all the ground handling and transportation and warehousing uh, services. So that's one. Uh, secondly, uh, of course, you know, having a global footprint uh, for a local company, right, for a Singapore-based company, means that the companies here would also have a potential opportunity to be able to tap on their big customer, in this case sets, to go regional and overseas as well. So in the past, they may not have easily, uh, easy access to the European or the US markets, but now with the, uh, you know, with their mm. uh, Singaporean-based customer having that access, they could then more easily be able to approach into those uh, overseas markets as well. All right, good to know. Uh, we'll just leave things as that for now. Thank you very much for your time, Associate Professor Go Pui Guan from the NUS Business School.